everyone and welcome to Tuesdays with SolidWorks, a weekly webinar series that we're launching every Tuesday at 11 a.m. in the morning for South Africa and 1 p.m. for Middle East. As always, we will talk about tips and tricks, tutorials, news, and all kind of SolidWorks related content. You have an open chat, so if you have any doubt, please do not hesitate to ask or leave us a comment and we will try to answer as soon as possible. So my name is Angela Cartil. I know it's difficult to pronounce, so you can just call me Angela if it's easier for you. And I am a SolidWorks channel marketing specialist for Iberia, South Africa and Middle East. Today I have with me Renzo Custer, Strategic Mar Marketing and Innovation Manager for from CADMES, a SOLIDWORKS official partner. So, well, actually, Renzo, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. I will leave that to you. And well, that's all. Thank you so much and enjoy the webinar. Hello and welcome to the webinar of How to Work Smarter with SOLIDWORKS. My name is, is Renzo Custer and um, I would like to show you uh, my tips and tricks for SOLIDWORKS uh, today. Maybe it's good that I have a small introduction of myself before we start. Um, on the basics, uh, I'm a trained uh, mechanical engineer and um, I'm working at, uh, at CADMAS. CADMAS is a uh, SOLIDWORKS reseller for uh, almost uh, 23 years now. Uh, we work in the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and South Africa. Um, for myself, I have 20 years of SOLIDWORKS uh, experience uh, at the moment and I'm an elite application engineer since uh, 2010. For now, I'm responsible for uh, the worldwide innovation and marketing strategy uh, within the CADMAS uh, company. Okay, what will be the, the subjects for, uh, for today? Um, I will uh, give you some tips for the user interface, the performance, the features and drawings. So let's go to the first uh, tip for the user interface and that is the use of uh, keyboard shortcuts. Um, but as you probably know there are a lot of uh, commands within the SOLIDWORKS and what can be very helpful if you use the drop down menus each and every command who has a shortcut menu connected to it they are displayed uh, within those uh, menus so for instance to browse the re recent documents uh, you can uh, use this command by using the keyboard shortcut R so when I uh, click this, uh, this command in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, we will directly uh, see that the, the recent documents uh, interface will show, uh, show up. This is a very helpful uh, menu, but uh, sometimes you see a lot of documents over here and it can be helpful that reducing the number of documents showed uh, to easily navigate through this uh, menu. How can we do this? When you go to the systems options and look at the general uh, the top uh, system option shows how many of those documents will be showed. So instead of 50 we choose for 15 and we, when we push the R button again we now see only 15 documents uh, over here. It makes it much more easier for us to, uh, to navigate through it. Uh, Maybe you are not aware of it, but there are also some, some quick filters available uh, in this uh, menu and it can also be uh, very easy to work with. Another uh, nice thing to work with is uh, pinning of documents. Maybe you are working within a project and you would like to uh, open a lot of times the, the main assembly of this project. So then you can use the pin button um, so that it will always be available. Another option is that you can use uh, the chevron uh, sign and you can choose how to open it. Will it be open lightweight? Will it be open fully resolved? Will it be open read only? So it makes it easier for you to open and navigate through those uh, documents. Uh, 
Another option I would like to discuss with you is the change of units. So normally uh, we use uh, mills, uh, but sometimes, when, uh, for instance, the floor of, uh, of this factory uh, is very large, we'd like to use uh, meters. So uh, it is easier that you use uh, the interface over here and you can choose not to use the millimeters. So uh, as described in the system options or in the documents options, but you can use a different kind of units, uh, meters, for instance, now. The second set of uh, tips and tricks I would like to discuss is performance, and especially for people who are making uh, complex parts or large assemblies, uh, this can be an important uh, subject. Um, one of the first things I would like to discuss is how to determine which parts uh, or which features um, are causing performance uh, problems, uh, for instance. And what you can do uh, to determine this is to make use of assembly visualization. So we have a, uh, an assembly over here of a uh, factory layout, and we would like to determine uh, which parts causes some problems. And then we can use the assembly visualization uh, tool. And within the assembly visualization, there is an option and it's called performance analysis. And it shows you based on the, the rebuild time or the total amount of graphics triangles, the most uh, sensitive or the, 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 the parts which causes the most problems or has the most rebuild uh, times. So in this example, it was uh, the fence or the fences. And let's have a look at those fences uh, to see what the problem is uh, over here. And what we can use to determine uh, what causes those uh, long rebuild uh, times um, within the assembly. Because when we look at the feature uh, tree, we see, we see a lot of features, but which of those features causes those, uh, those problems? And therefore, we can use the performance evaluation uh, tool within SolidFlex itself. And what we see over here, also all the features itself, uh, with the rebuild time in it and the total rebuild time. So we have a total rebuild time of uh, more than six uh, seconds uh, in here. And we know that uh, the last features, the combine and the pattern features, are causing the biggest um, rebuild uh, times. So uh, we can work on, uh, on those. Um, what can we do to, um, to increase the performance? Uh, what we can do is maybe uh, try to uh, use the, the robot bar uh, so that those features are not uh, calculated, so they are not in the model itself, but then we have a limited uh, model, which is not easy uh, or which is not showing what it should uh, show. So what we can use is uh, what you call the freeze bar. The freeze bar is something which looks as the, the robot bar. If it's not on by default, you can use the system options. And in general, you can say, OK, I would like to enable the freeze bar. It looks like, uh, as I said, uh, as a Warwick bar, but instead that it is blue, the freeze, ba freeze bar is uh, yellow. So we have turned it on uh, now. And we see in the top of the uh, feature manager tree, we now see the, the freeze bar. Um, like the Warwick bar, we can put this one into a position and it lit literally freezes uh, all those uh, features. As you can see, there are some locks uh, now displayed. And we go back to the performance uh, evaluation, and we see now a total rebuild time of zero seconds, uh, which was before uh, more than six seconds. It's now zero seconds. Um, there is a drawback. This model is now, as the name says, it is fixed, it is frozen. Um, so it will not change based on uh, other model uh, changes, but for some uh, products that's that's no problem. So the freeze bar can really 
speed up the performance of your models. But what if um, the model should change uh, and you have uh, this, uh, this fence for instance uh, and you don't want to model the fence uh, completely because this is probably a product that you should buy and not make. Um, we can use uh, maybe some appearances. Um, for instance, we have in the appearances we have a chain link uh, steel uh, texture. If you place this on a model, on the surface for instance, uh, then the model still looks the same. Um, but it is way more uh, easy to handle for SolidWorks because it's just a, it's just a texture. In the settings you can scale the texture itself, so the size is as you uh, would like to, uh, to have. Um, and if we go uh, to the performance uh, evaluation uh, again, we will see that um, the rebuild time of before more than 6 seconds is now dropped down to 0.2 uh, seconds, which is a huge difference. And uh, in the total model, it still looks the same for you. So this definitely can speed up your model very much. So and now we go to my, one of my favorite uh, topics, the features. Um, the first thing I would like to uh, bring to your attention are the reference planes. Um, the reference planes are items that you use uh, quite often in, in SOLIDWORKS and they actually are already three available when you start a new part. Uh, but when you have created a part uh, and uh, resize it to smaller or, or larger, the planes can be uh, very large, very small. And when you right click on a plane and choose for outer size, the planes always be uh, the size of the bounding box of the, of the part. And they scale together with, uh, with the model. And it can be very helpful uh, to always be able to select them or to select the model uh, and to be sure that they are both in the right size. Also, when you would like to create new uh, planes, so you would like to make an offset of a plane, you can use the control drag uh, method. Uh, when you uh, select uh, one of the planes you would like to, uh, to offset and hold the, the control key on your keyboard and drag out uh, the plane, it will directly start the, uh, the feature of copying a plane and um, you have directly uh, made the new plane. But what if you would like to, um, to set this plane on a certain distance? Then uh, the next tip will be very helpful. Uh, you can use the, the measure tool. The measure tool is one of those functions that is always available, even when other functions are active. As you can see over here, uh, I have selected uh, the measurement function within the creation of the plane. I can measure at a certain distance. Look at this option. You have directly the option to copy the, uh, the dimension you have just measured. I will paste it in this box. And you also have the ability to add an equation uh, over here. So the measurement plus 20, OK, and it will directly uh, calculate the new value uh, for you. Talking about planes, um, you normally have your standard three planes, the primary planes, and you have the rest of the planes. And uh, there is an option to uh, hide or show the primary planes. So it can be very helpful when you are uh, using reference planes a lot that you just hide the primary planes and keep the normal planes available while working. So now you know that there are two options to hide and show your planes. Another option that I use very often is the, uh, the S key. This is for, uh, for bringing up the shortcut uh, menu. So when I press the S button on my keyboard, um, directly there will be a shortcut menu 
directly on the place where my mouse is, uh, is on the screen. And that makes it possible for me to minimize the amount of mouse travel on my, uh, on my screen. What I do like uh, to use is a not a standard uh, three button mouse, uh, but a five button uh, button mouse, so that I can uh, program uh, to one of the extra buttons the the keystroke as to it, um, so that I do not have to touch the the, touch the keyboard itself, but just with this extra button on the mouse, I can make this menu appear. Another one is when you use the, the full round fillet a lot, uh, then you have to also travel back and forth from the model uh, to the menu. Uh, but also over there you can use the, the right mouse button uh, menu. So when I click the first face, I will see that my, uh, my mouse cursor will change. So I clicked on the right mouse button and uh, the program will switch to the different uh, input uh, field and now I can uh, do all my selections and directly uh, finish my full round fillet. When I have created the feature and I would like to make uh, the same sort of feature again, then I can also use the enter key on my keyboard. And the enter key is the repeat of my last used command. So over here I last used the full round fillet, I press the enter key, it will, it will directly uh, use the, the, the fillet for me again. So this can also be very helpful when I would like to use uh, features over and over again. And another option is to reuse features. Um, so what you can do is to control drag to copy a, uh, an existing uh, feature. This can be done from, uh, from the feature tree, but can also be done from the model itself. So when I place it, it will ask me what should I do with the, the relations in the sketch. Should they we dangle them or should we delete them? For this I have chosen to delete them. So now we will go to the sketch itself, replace the center point of my uh, of my hole to the center point of the full round fillet I've just created and when I close the sketch it will directly show up with the same uh, hole as I've used in the bottom of the of the model. So it's quite easy to reuse my uh, my models or my, my features again and again and again. So let's continue with the last uh, the last part of my tips and tricks uh, session and this is drawings and um, a lot to talk about for uh, for drawings um, for instance when you have a drawing with a bill of material on it and there are some items in in there that should not be in an, uh, in the bill of material for instance this uh, Cadmus mannequin and the, and the plant for or that are typically uh, not the components you need to uh, produce or to buy uh, they are there just for reference and therefore you don't want to have them uh, in your bill of material that you use for buying or manufacturing and how can we solve this so we can solve this um, by using the exclude from bomb uh, functionality so now we switch to the assembly and um, have a look at the components. So we have two mannequins in the in the model. Uh, they have been training a lot, as you as you, as you can see. Um, and um, when we select them uh, in the feature tree and go to the properties of this component, you have the option to choose from uh, exclude from bill of material. Uh, when this option is checked. Uh, this model will not be shown uh, in the assembly. We do the same uh, trick again uh, for the plant floor, also exclude from bill of material. And when we switch back to, uh, to the drawing, we will uh, definitely see that uh, they, uh, they are removed. So let's switch back. 
and do a rebuild on the drawing. And now we see that both the plant floor and the mannequin is, uh, is removed. The only thing is that we still have some, uh, some balloons in it. Uh, and they don't refer to anything anymore. Uh, so therefore, we need to remove them uh, from the drawing. So I think that can be uh, very helpful for the most, uh, most people of you. Um, a model brake view, typically something that we use a lot for large uh, products. If this functionality isn't in your uh, model, you can use the search function and the command search in the top of your screen. Just type in the command, it will directly come up and you can use it. Um, we can use the model break view typically for a 2D drawing, but you can also use it in a uh, 3D model. And uh, as you can see for a, uh, a large fence or a shaft or anything like that, uh, we can use it. And um, this is the same as in the, in the 2D drawing. And if we uh, create a model break view like this, we can reuse it on my uh, 2D drawing. So if you have already created over here, you can just uh, activate it uh, just like a configuration. Uh, it makes it easier for you just to prepare your uh, 2D drawing already on your uh, 3D model. The same uh, is for uh, section views. Uh, you can use um, section views on a 2D drawing, but also in a 3D model. And uh, items like uh, bolts, nuts, washers, are typically items that uh, you should not section on a drawing. And uh, therefore you can use the functionality uh, to exclude some components from the section uh, view. And also uh, this section view, if you save it, can be reused uh, on the drawing. Uh, it makes it easier for you to make your 2D drawing uh, afterwards. Uh, so when you prepare it up front. When you create a new drawing of this component, for instance, and your uh, template um, isn't set correctly, you will see that um, there is no scaling. So when I add my views to it, uh, they will definitely be out of scale to the, uh, to the drawing uh, template. And I would like to automate the, the scaling. So I close my drawing, go to my uh, document properties, uh, sorry, the system options, and choose for the automatically scale new drawing views. When this option is on, and when I create, create a new drawing, then all my views, or my first view actually, will be uh, scaled to a scale, to a uh, standardized scale uh, that will fit at least three views on my, uh, on my drawing. So you see it's, it's way more easier uh, than scaling it afterwards. When I have my drawing, yeah, there is always this alignment when I project my, uh, my views uh, based on, a, uh, on, on, a, on another view. The same is for uh, this isometric view. Uh, but when I use the console key while dragging, the alignment will be broken. So it makes it easier for me to place a view like an isometric view on a different location. So quite quite easy to use. A detail view is when you choose when you first choose uh, the command is always based on a circle. And uh, sometimes you would like to uh, create a detail view based on something else than just a, uh, a circle. So what can we do when we not first choose the detail view command, but first create a sketch. A sketch can be a spline, can be lines, etc. But it needs to be a closed contour. Um, you have this sketch selected and then uh, start the detail view command. 
then the sketch will be used as the outline for my detail uh, view. And so this can be very helpful when you would like to create another kind of a detail uh, view in your drawing. Also another option uh, which I find quite helpful is, uh, is text alignment. So when I draw first a, uh, a box and then put a text in, uh, in here, um, the text without any, uh, any arrows, uh, any leaders to it, I type in a random text. This is just in Dutch uh, for now. Uh, so you, you also learn some, uh, some foreign languages uh, in, this, uh, in this webinar. Uh, you can place it anywhere, it is definitely not in the center, but when I uh, click all the lines of my rectangle and the text itself, right mouse button on it, and then I can choose for uh, the snap to rectangle center, and it will be directly in the center of my, uh, of my rectangle. So it's quite easy to do the alignment of text on a drawing based on a rectangle. So we, uh, we would like to uh, annotate uh, this, uh, this drawing. We'd like to put some center lines uh, in it, some center marks, some dimensions. Uh, but a lot of times you would like to place those uh, annotations in different kind of layers. And because uh, then you have a, uh, a different color, uh, different line type. Uh, it is easier for you to uh, to switch the, the, the annotations off, um, but then you most of the times you need to add those annotations afterwards to all my uh, to all my uh, annotations um, um, to a different layer. Um, what you see over here is when I add my annotations, um, I see the, all the different colors. So probably. Uh, based at those colors, um, as you can see, they have been directly placed into the correct layer. How did I do this? Also over here, when you look into the uh, document properties, and for instance the notes, you can say, okay, when I create a note, it always needs to be in my layer notes. If I look at my dimensions, it should always be in my layer dimensions. My center lines should always be in my layer center lines. So when I set this once and create a drawing like this, always all my annotations will directly go into the, uh, in the correct layers. And it makes my life way much easier than do this, doing this by hand. Um, when I have a dimension placed in my model, and I would like to have this dimension in a, in a different view, don't uh, copy, paste it, delete it. Just use the shift button on your keyboard and move a uh, dimension from one view to another view and it will directly snap to the model itself. Uh, it makes it very, uh, very easy, very helpful for you. And another item is when we have a section view and with this uh, section view, uh, like we have seen before, I don't want to uh, to cut my, my fasteners, my bolts, my nuts, uh, my washers. Uh, but what you can see in this, uh, in this section view, some of them have been cut and some of them have been excluded. And what is the reason for this? Um, the ones that haven't been uh, cut are items that, uh, that are created from, uh, from my toolbox library. But when I have downloaded maybe a fastener from the internet, then I can set the property is fastener to a value one. So it means that is fastener is true. Then SolidWorks will think that this item is really a fastener and it will apply to all the rules for fasteners. So then it will not be uh, sectioned in a, in a view. Uh, I can exclude it, um, for instance, from a collision detection, etc. So when I create my uh, section view again, exclude fasteners is on. 
then those items are not uh, sectioned in my section view. And this also makes my life quite easy. And so this function can also be used for, uh, for shafts, for instance. So these were the tips and tricks I uh, wanted to share with you uh, today. I hope uh, that they uh, that you find it useful for your uh, for your daily work and that you are now able to work uh, smarter and more effective with uh, with SolidWorks. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to share them uh, with us. We uh, definitely would like to uh, to answer them uh, for you. So. Thank you already. Exactly. Thank you, Renzo, for your presentation. And before that, I just want to say that you can find us on our website, solidworks.com, and also on social media. We have Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and a blog. So do not hesitate to follow us. Uh, now I will leave you again with Renzo. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. The chat is open and we'll be here for a few minutes. Thank you.